Next.js React Server Components, or RSCs, have turned React into PHP. I keep hearing this everywhere, in my comment stream on this channel, on Twitter. And any time I hear a lot of stuff like that, and I like to say to myself, well, let's try it out. Let's take a look at PHP versus Next.js RSCs and a super secret dark horse candidate, a language that we've never covered before on this channel. We'll look at developer experience. On this 10th anniversary of React, are we still getting the same advantages that we got 10 years ago over PHP? And do they still matter? And of course, we'll look at performance. And some of these numbers, they're gonna blow your mind. But before you get started, I wanna say a big thank you to Get Nation, who covered the cost of my travel to Amsterdam so I could go to the JS Nation and React Summit conferences, which were incredible. The biggest React conferences I've ever been to. And it was so great meeting a lot of you in person and hearing what you liked about the channel and trading stories. It was fantastic. I got seven interviews with presenters at the conference, including Mark Erickson and Ryan Carniato, and I'll be posting those over the next few weeks. Without further ado, let's get right into it. In order to have a comparison, you have to have an app to compare. So this is the app that we're going to compare. It starts off with a simple table. There is no client-side interactivity here yet at all. It's just a table of the first 20 Pokemon coming out of this JSON file, which acts as our microservice in this example. On the far right is PHP. At the top, we go and get the URL using file get contents. Then we convert that JSON into an array, take the top 20, and then we just have our HTML. And in the middle of that, we have our for each loop that goes through each one of the items in the array and outputs it as a div. Literally, the entire application fits right on the screen here. On the far right-hand side, we have the React Server Components version. We have a component, home, that first starts off by doing a fetch to get the data, and then it awaits the JSON, and we get back an array from that. And then we return the JSX, where we have the table header, and then we use a slice to get the top 20, and then we map over that and create all the divs. And I think you can see why people are saying that these two things are starting to look a little bit symmetric. That being said, if I replace the PHP version with a Next.js 13 pages version, they also look pretty similar. The only difference is that I moved the fetch from inside the component to now inside of get server side props. The result is the same. In each one of these three scenarios, app router, pages, and PHP, all three are server side rendered. And of course, all this code is available to you on GitHub for free in a link in the description right down below. And that is our DX comparison on the server side between PHP and React Server Components. And I got to say, between these two things, I think PHP is actually simpler at this point. But really, who out there is delivering an application with no client-side interactivity? So let's compare how to add client-side interactivity between these two and get a full comparison of the developer experience. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an input text field at the top where you can just type in a value and it pairs the results down to just what matches that text. Let's start off by adding this functionality to the Next.js 13 app router application and see how we go. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is take this div and turn it into a client component. So we'll create a new folder called components and into that a file called Pokemon list and we'll export a component with that layout. So we got our Pokemon list component exported. It's gonna take an initial data. That initial data is gonna be our list of Pokemon and then we are going to save that as state and we're gonna update that state with new results as we change out the Pokemon. So let's go and paste in our template. Looks pretty good. So let's go import this into our page and use it. I think we're ready to give it a try and it looks pretty good. So let's go and take this and add our input field. And then we have to wrap it in a fragment there we go, a nice uncontrolled input. So now we wanna make a way to request data back from the server. So with Next.js 13.4, we got server actions, and I think that's a fantastic way to go and make a subsequent request when we change that text to go and get the Pokemon that match the filter that the user input. So let's go and create our server action over here. To do that, we create an async function called Pokemon Search that uses use server, and that tells Next.js 13.4, that this is a server action. We're going to pass that on to the Pokemon list. It doesn't understand that, so let's go back over here and add it as a prop. So far, so good. Let's go back into here, and we'll actually implement our search. 
So we want to start off by getting our list of Pokemon. And then we return that array, filtered down by the name, and then sliced to the first 20 results. Okay, let's go back over to Pokemon list. Now when we run this, we're going to get some data back. So we need to have that list of Pokemon stored as state. So let's go in and bring in uState. And we'll use it to create a list of Pokemon, which we will then use instead of initial data. Let's hit save, say so go. And now it's telling us that we're trying to use a hook in something that's a server component. So why is it a server component? Well, we haven't put in use client. So let's bring in use client and give it another try. Okay, seems to like that. Now let's just add an onChange handler that will set the Pokemon to whatever comes back from the Pokemon search with our target value. Let's see. <laughs> wow, that's pretty slick. I gotta say, server actions in 13.4 f are really nice and they are an easy way to create search APIs like this. So let's go see how we could do this in PHP and then compare the two and see what the differences are. Okay, so over in our PHP project, we have run.sh and it just runs PHP in server mode. You give it the you give it the host and the port, like 9,000, and we're good to go. And then we got our index.php and that's the page. Okay, I'll use that run.sh shell script to run our PHP server. And we'll take a look. Yep, looks exactly like where we started. Okay, let's bring in our input field. Hit save and refresh. There you go, nice input field. Now there's a lot of different ways to handle the JavaScript on a page like this. When I was in PHP, we used jQuery. So I'm gonna bring in the jQuery library. I'm not gonna use NPM for it, I'm just gonna have it as a script tag. I'm just gonna bring that in and then we're gonna write some jQuery code to make this interactive. So we're bringing in jQuery 3.7.0 and we'll add it as a script tag down here. And then we're going to create our JavaScript file for this page. We'll call it app.js. And we'll start off as most jQuery applications do by having a document ready where we give it a function and it says once the document is ready, then call this function. So back over in index.php, we have an input field with an ID of search. IDs are a nice way to be able to find specific items on a page. So we're going to use that using the dollar syntax to find the search element and then add an event listener to it. To do that, all I have to do is just use dollar, which is jQuery, and then use the hash search to find the search element, and then do on to register the on event listener. Now let's just find out the value of the field. So to do that, you just use this, and then you get the value, and we'll just console log that out. And now we just need to bring this app.js onto the page. So let's go and add a script tag for that. And let's try this thing out. And if we go over to the console, we can see that we get console logs with all of those values. Pretty nice. Now we need an endpoint to call to get back the list of the Pokemon that we're looking for. Now we use a server action on Next.js. How are we going to do that over in PHP? Well, we're going to create another PHP script. We'll call this one search.php. And then there we'll do a lot of what we did before, getting the URL, decoding the JSON. Then we'll just do a simple array filter to go and pare that down to the items that we want. And then we'll return the JSON. Now back over in app.js, we can make that fetch to go get that data. To do that, we call $.getJSON and we give it the URL that we want and we give it our search field and we get back our Pokemon. So now what do we want to do? Well, we want to go and replace the contents of the table with the data that we got back. So we need to go and find the table. Thankfully, we have an ID on table called table. So let's go get that. And then we want to empty that table. Now the table div has two sections to it. It's got a set of font bold div tags at the top, which are the header, and then it's got the data section down below. When we do empty, we get rid of all of it. So the first thing we need to do is replace that header section with new tags. So let's go build those out. To do that, I'm simply going to append to the now empty table element one item each for an array of name, type, and so forth, where we create the contents of that div by just using a string template. And then I join it all together, and there you go. Now to replace the data section, we'll just use a four. We do that same kind of thing. We just append row by row as we go. Let's hit save and see how we go. Wow, awesome. All right, so now we have symmetric applications between PHP and Next.js 13.4. Let's talk about some of the advantages of React that we saw when we were working in PHP and figure out if they're still there. So let's do our side-by-side -side taste test again with PHP on the far left-hand side and Next.js on the other side, and we'll talk about the three advantages that we got with React that kind of pushed us to using React. The first was isomorphic rendering. So what does all that mean? Well, if you look at the React side of the house, 
Everything is done on JavaScript on both the server and the client. Even though it says use client in this component, it's being rendered on both the client and the server. And it's using the same exact JavaScript to do it in both places. Whereas on the PHP side, you've got two different ways you render tags on the page. The first is using PHP, and the second is using JavaScript later. So what happens if we make a change to the PHP side and we don't make a change to the JavaScript side? Well, those two things can get out of sync, and that can be a real problem. The second huge advantage of React was that you have the state to DOM model. You can make a change to the state, it automatically updates the DOM. Anytime you do set Pokemon, it's going to change the state of the component. That's going to force a re-render and update the screen. And those states are never going to get out of alignment. Now over in PHP, if I were to go and take out the empty and hit save, now the table no longer empties itself on every request. That means if I type in B here, then we will add another table to the end of the existing table. And this can happen. You can have bugs in your state to DOM code because it's not symmetric. It's not handled by a framework. And this was really a problem as you write larger and larger jQuery applications. Now, the third thing we looked for React to do was to reduce flicker. With jQuery code back in the day, you'd replace large sections of the DOM really primitively like this, and you would get in the older browsers, a lot of Flickr, which was not great. Because of the VDOM, React was making sure that you only made the required changes necessary to the DOM on any given update. And that greatly reduced Flickr on older browsers. But let's see if that Flickr still remains. So I uncomment out table empty, and I try it again. We can see that there's literally no Flickr, and that's just because browsers have improved to the point where they're just faster and they're smarter about how they make DOM updates. Now, one last thing before we go, this is actually the kind of React way of writing PHP. What you probably do instead is something like this. We create another PHP script called search HTML, and it would do the same search, but instead of returning JSON, it would just return HTML. And then over in our app.js, we can get rid of all of this, and instead we call $get, instead of get JSON, we call search HTML, give it that search value, and then we get back the text, and then we just use .html to replace the entire contents of that block. Let's hit save, try it again, and it works fine, no flicker, and we've removed the issue where we could have JavaScript that gets out of sync with PHP because we're no longer using JavaScript to format anything. Everything is formatted in PHP. So now that we have these two comparisons, let's talk performance. Let's take a look at the performance metrics between these three types of applications, the two Next.js ones, Pages and App Router, and then PHP. On the Next.js side, everything has been built, so it's going to be maximally performant. And of course, all these numbers are relative. These are the numbers on my machine. You'll get different numbers, but they should be relatively the same to each other. So when it comes to response time, Pages is going to be faster than App Router, but they're both going to be beaten by PHP. That means that the server can handle more requests per second, so Pages is going to be way less than PHP, and AppRouter is going to be less than Pages. When it comes to the sizes and kilobytes of the pages returned, these are very small pages, but Pages on the Next.js side wins, the AppRouter comes in a little bit heavier, and then the PHP version comes in heavier still. There's an interesting reason for that. This is the view source coming off of PHP. You can see that there's a lot of white space here, and then this is the page source coming out of Next.js. You can see that they just compressed the white space. Those white spaces are bytes. So yeah, it's just going to be smaller. You could go and remove all of the white space out of here and get to a page which is smaller than what's coming out of Next.js because Next.js is putting all of this data at the end in order to do hydration, and none of that is happening on the PHP side. So right here at the end is just the end. And then finally, the size of the JavaScript. In this case, Next.js wins in both cases. PHP is a little bit bigger, but that's because PHP is bringing in an enormous jQuery library and not really doing much of anything with it at all. In fact, if we were to go over to our PHP project and instead of using jQuery, used vanilla JavaScript instead, let's see how big that is. So this is the vanilla JS version of the code. We're just doing a get element by ID, we're adding an event listener, and then we're doing a straight up fetch like we would over on the React side. Finally, we're just setting the inner HTML. To try this out, we just go over and change app to app vanilla. And we can see 
that this works just as well. So how big is appvanilla.js? Well, appvanilla.js is 0.4K. So I change this value to 0.4. Yeah, we can see that it almost disappears. So why didn't we do this back in the day? Well, back in the day, browsers were a lot more incompatible with each other. Nowadays, the DOM manipulation stuff like get element by ID and add event listener has been so normalized that in a lot of cases, you don't need to use jQuery. And so that means you can cut down on the amount of JavaScript being sent to the page because you're not bringing in that huge jQuery library. So I think the big number here is the response time number, 76 milliseconds at the low end. So is there something we can do and make that even smaller? Well, yeah, we can bring in Rust. So over in the code that's linked to in the description, there's a Rust directory that has in it a Rust server using Rocket. And this basically defines the different routes. For example, we have a static file route that we use to serve static pages. And then there is the index route where you get the Pokemon from the service. And then we use a template to render that. The templates are over in the templates directory. These are Terra templates that have some basic looping mechanisms like for and end for. So we have two different templates. We have the index template that you see here, and then we have the partial template. That partial template is used by the search route to just give back the section of the code that is going to be inside of that table. So in terms of the app.js that we're going to use, we're going to use jQuery again. We're going to use that same one that we used on PHP, where we just replace the contents of the table. To run this, we use cargo run with the dash R flag for release mode. And we can see that it's pretty quick. Yeah. So let's see how quick by using OHA. So we'll run 500 requests against our Rust server. And what do we get back? We get an average response time of 0 0.023 seconds or 23 milliseconds to return a response. That includes the time to go and get the Pokemon data on every single request, which is about 10 milliseconds. So we're talking about a 13 millisecond response time if you were to do something like caching, but we're not, so we want to keep the numbers symmetric. So where does Rust stack up? Well, pretty good. You can see that it's tripled the response speed of PHP, which means that it can field almost 2,000 requests per second. The page size is about the same. Again, we weren't removing any white space. And again, the JavaScript size is bigger because we're still using jQuery. Now that you know the performance numbers, what do you think? Which one would you use? I'd love to hear that in the comment section down below. For me, I think I'm the biggest hypocrite in the world because when it comes to Next.js and React, which is what I'll probably still use going forward, I will prefer pages over app router. Not because it's currently speedier. It's not going to be speedier long term. They are going to fix the performance on that, but because we still don't really understand the best practices when it comes to the relationship between server components and client components, I think it starts off really easy, but when you get into more complex scenarios, it's actually harder than it was in pages. So in a way, I'm kind of a hypocrite because I'm not willing to pay the performance difference between AppRider and pages, but I should, if performance is the biggest metric, go with something like Rust because it completely blows the doors off of Next.js and PHP. But I'm not because I like the isomorphic rendering and the state model of React. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this comparison. Let me know in the comments section right down below. In the meantime, of course, if you like this video, hit that like button. It really helps the channel out. And hit that subscribe button and click on that bell if you want more videos like this. I'll see you on the next Blue Collar Coder.